Before studying fine art in Stellenbosch, Adrian lived in Piketberg, where his family converted a castle into a guest house. Now 25, he's one of SA's most prolific sculptors. Hard to believe he once considered becoming a dentist. So this is the castle where I grew up. The one guy used to come visit always and tell me about dragons and bring stones from the mines, so a red, a blue and a green stone in the shape of a dragon egg. And I would sit for hours waiting for these things to hatch at the fire stove. His already vivid imagination flourished and formed the foundation of his creative development. This is such a magical place to grow up in. I could see how your imagination would develop. As a child, you always fuel your imagination with anything that's in your environment. So I often used to play in the garden, play between moss and stones, building things, giving it to my parents as gifts, making my own toys. And all of those things I think you re-emulate later on in your life. He served his apprenticeship with artist and sculptor Lionel Smith, who he cites as one of his biggest inspirations. He now has his own studio in Strand, in which he expresses his artistic vision. So today you're going to actually help me a bit in the studio. Here's a pair of gloves. Usually I use plaster scene or wood. The wood I salvage from forests or from ships. And the reason why I use it is because they have a lot of water that draws to the sand there. So often the wood is quite rotten and it allows for me to not have control because I like having control usually. Here's some plaster scene that I've prepared and you can paint this onto the sculpture for me. Okay, I really don't want to mess this up so explain to me exactly what I have to do. Don't worry, you can just apply it. Okay. What can you tell me about the sculpture? So this piece I will usually start working on something and I'll let the process kind of guide me. So things that look a bit redundant I'll start removing and things that I feel needs to be added I'll add. If it's too controlled I'll sometimes even throw the sculpture over. What do you mean you throw it over? So at, when I started by Lionel I couldn't really sculpt and under the guidance of him I was able to learn to sculpt classically. But often I find that it addresses a sense of emotion within a person that you kind of feel accomplished once it's perfect. So to get away from it I'll throw it over or I'll break pieces off and lose control of the piece so that the piece gets its own voice. When it comes to casting his artworks, Adrian doesn't do it alone. He has a talented and experienced team who help him bring his sculptures to life. Hi Victoria. I know you're not just applying wax randomly, there's an art to it. Yeah, it needs a specialized skill for you to do this because you have to get the sizes of it right because if you don't get it right, the hair bronze will end up being too heavy for it. So your waxes have to be hot so that it captures all the textures that are in this rubber. It has to come out as it is, as how the artist has done it. Adrian's creations have been exhibited both at home and away from the Everard Reed Gallery in Cape Town to Art Fair Cologne in Germany and Art Fair Strasbourg in France. Jalil, you've been doing this for 16 years. I believe there's quite a science behind it. Being a metal cast is, is quite unique. It's a trade on its own. It's a lot of mathematics, science, you name it. Ratios, formulas, you have to have it pin on. So what happens is we use silica, 4% of silica with 1% of manganese flakes and a 95% copper, then you have your silicon bronze. Once the pot is ready and on temperature, we degas to take all the impurities out, we use a thing that's called phosphocouple waffle plate. It's a complex process, but these various additives help improve the quality of the bronze. Why did you throw glass bottles in the mix? You need to put glass bottles in there just to help to take the slag off. Uh, then we get ready for the casting. Your ceramic molds must be glowing hot. In your metal, you take it close to 1200 and then you pour it into your molds, and that's it. When it comes to casting, you get one shot to do it right. If it's not right, you have to start the process from all over again, which is quite costly. <laughs> it takes a while for the metal to cool down. Spraying the mold with water speeds it up. So this is one of the coolest parts of the process. So these are the shells we casted just now. We're going to unwrap the presents and see what we have inside. Jade may not be a multi-award winning sculptor, but as it turns out, she's pretty good with a hammer. This is awesome. Check out the 
foot. Once the sculpture emerges, finishing touches are added and made permanent via welding before it's sealed with color enhancing techniques. What is happening at this stage? This is the patination stage. This helps with the preservation of the sculpture to age more beautifully. Some of the statues overseas and locally have these green lines on them. That's a form of decay or deterioration due to oxidization on the surface. Usually the sculptures all have various chemical layers like this that build up and after that it will be waxed which seals it. His gallery above the workshop shows off his imaginative creations. Adrian, your work is perfection and you've achieved all of this at 25. Would you say your studies equipped you for your professional career? I think that from a conceptual level it's definitely helped and inspired a lot of pieces learning how to look at theory, how to incorporate theory, psychoanalysis, all these things. What is the groundwork within your art? For artists, usually a lot of your work is personal and it's very, it's an extraction of yourself or extension of yourself. For me, I try to make it exciting, always challenge myself, that's very important. Um, to constantly push the boundaries and exceed to continue growing as a person within your work, but also to let your work have its own voice at the end of the day. Are there any elements from your childhood that are still prevalent in your artwork? I often use the man, the ship, the horse, and I can construct narratives. So it's pretty much, I would say, on a similar scale as when I was a child, taking sticks, stones, constructing narratives, building things, showing my parents mythological things, intertwining everything that I feel is a part of being a child. At the moment, it's just a bit more on a grandiose scale, but still playing, ultimately. It's this sense of playful joy that makes his masterpieces so unique.